We have our Shakespeare book on the screen in InDesign. Uh, we've created a print version of this. And so now um, the idea is to create an ebook version uh, in reflurable format. <clears throat> so as you can see, I've got two sections, an introduction and uh, the play itself within my book panel, as you can see here. And I'm just going to start off by making, by actually exporting this as an EPUB without having uh, done anything too uh, dramatic to it before we, uh, before we do it, just so that we can have a look at some of the issues. Uh, I'll just remind you of what we've actually got here. We've got a, a half title, frontispiece, main title page, copyright, and then a table of contents. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the various um, aspects of the introduction and also uh, the play itself. Uh, which we'll, uh, we'll we'll look at later, but let's just let's just have a go and see what happens. Okay, so we do this from the book panel. Uh, so I'm clicking on this menu here, and I'm going to export this book to EPUB. Uh, but I'm going to choose the reflurable format. Okay, I've got a folder here, Midsummer folder. And I'm going to save this in this location here. So let's actually just uh, call this FL for reflurable for the moment and uh, change this to reflurable down here. Now it should give us a, a few different um, dialog boxes to, uh, to fill in some information. So we're going to bring that onto the screen now. Uh, we want EPUB 3. Uh, we're choosing an image. I've already done this one, so I've got my cover. So that's the one that we're using. Now we're going to use a table of contents, multi-level talk. This one here is uh, the one that I've saved that's actually on the page. So we're going to have this one on the page and as the logical table of contents. Um, I'm basing it on the page layout. And I'm splitting the document based on the paragraph style export tags. We'll just have a look at that. Uh, a little bit later, but that's just uh, trust me on this one. It's going to split it um, on the um, on the act, for example, and, uh, and on the scene. Okay, just a few other things that we should set. Um, we're going to have the the uh, footnotes are going to come up in a pop up. Um, the objects I'm going to make sure that they're relative to text flow, so that they change size. If I've got images, they will change size depending on the user's uh, ebook reader. Uh, and I'm going to use the highest possible resolution for my images so that they enlarge up very nicely in the maximum possible quality in JPEG. Uh, we need to put in some metadata, Midsummer Night's Dream uh, by the author. Uh, we've got some other things that we might need to add in there later, but for the moment we can leave that. Now the other thing is, under here we are including the embeddable fonts. So make sure that you include those and uh, just see what happens when we when we try this. OK, so this might uh, resolve in a few little errors, but no, uh, nothing too serious. OK, let's now um, this will now open directly in iBooks. There's the cover. And it's brought us straight into one of the pages. Let's just go back through this from beginning to end and see what kind of issues we've got. Okay, well, you can see it's rather a mess, um, but we need to explain really what's going on here. So for a start, we've got the half title. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream just simply appeared right at the top of the frontispiece. Our, our title page, which was made of a, a combination of various fonts, is a complete mess, as you can see. Uh, and then, and then that's followed very closely by the uh, the copyright page, um, and then we have the table of contents, uh, not displaying particularly nicely, but anyway, it is there. Um, and then we also have the uh, heading for the life of Shakespeare, right, sitting right on the top. So if we compare that to our uh, our actual page layout, I mean, it's, not, it's obviously not what we want because we want these things to um, exist on their own page. As you can see, the title for The Life of Shakespeare has its own page, so we really want uh, to try to maintain that kind of layout. Um, now, also, the other thing is that we don't actually want a half title. This is the, the half title that appears in the print book, and we really do not want it. Um, we could possibly even remove the table of contents from the page and just use one 
that is the logical uh, table of contents. If we go back to um, Ironbooks and just have a look at that book again, uh, you'll see that we do have the table of contents which is interactive. It should allow us to go into one particular place like this. Uh, but also we have a logical table of contents uh, constructed, as you can see, a drop-down menu constructed from the structure uh, within the play. Um, and in some ways, uh, you might say, well, actually, I prefer just to have that. We certainly at the moment have both. Uh, but if we're going to have both, we might need to do a little bit of tweaking to our table of contents to make it display a lot nicer. Um, the problem with the on-screen table of contents, I should say on-page table of contents, is that the page numbers aren't really appropriate because these are the page numbers in the printed book. And if we look at, say, Shakespeare as an actor on page 12, um, let's see what that actually does in reality. Let's just go back to the table of contents here. I've just overshot there. So Shakespeare's life as an actor, page 12. If I click on that, yeah, it's gone to page 12. Um, OK, so that wasn't a particularly good example. But let's try uh, something else. Let's go to, um, uh, say, uh, Act 4, uh, Scene 2. That's not page 117, clearly, it's page 90. Um, so the page numbers are not necessarily uh, appropriate. Whereas if you see in here, uh, we do actually get the right page number. So we're looking here at scene two, and that is indeed on page 90. So it recalculates the page numbers depending on the, uh, on the font size and so forth. OK, so what can we do about this then? What are the things that we need to do? OK, the first thing I should say is that because we want to control what's not in the book, uh, that is to say we don't want this uh, half title, yes, of course, we could delete that page. But then the truth of the matter is that we want to try to keep things uh, as they are or were in the print version so that we don't have to have a completely different uh, version for the uh, for the uh, ebook. So let's first of all, think of a way of doing that? Well, here's the answer. Um, if we go to uh, look at another item that we haven't necessarily come across before called the articles, let's just drag that over here and make that window a little bit smaller. The articles uh, panel is a place where you can actually order your content. So you can take these various components and put them into the articles and then order them according to the way that you want them to be uh, exported or indeed uh, remove them altogether from the export. Let me show you what I mean. Let's drag this box into the articles panel and call it half title. Now I can unclick include when exporting. There you are. So that won't now export. Also uh, what we can do is to order all of these items now. So let's just drag that image and call it Frontis. Here's my group. I've previously already grouped all of this together. It's important this is all grouped uh, so that it's one, one object. Uh, plop that into there and call it Title. Move on to the next section. Here is the copyright. Drop that into there, call it copyright page, or copyright will do. Here is my table of contents. Put that into there, call it TOC. OK, and then move on to the next page. And now uh, there's nothing on this page, but this, is the, this, is, this one here, as you can see, is now threaded. This is threaded, so from now on, this whole introduction is threaded uh, from here to the end of the introduction. So all I need to do now is to drag that box into here and call it the uh, intro. Uh, and that, that really uh, amounts to all of the articles in this particular uh, InDesign document, the introduction. So as you can see, I've unticked half titles so that won't appear. I could possibly even untick copyright and just use uh, a, a logical one, but I'm going to leave it where it is for, for the moment because we now need to move on to the play itself because we need to do it for both. So here's the intro, uh, the title page uh, for the play, uh, and I'm just going to put that into here as well. This is uh, play title, if you like. Uh, then we have another uh, thread. Now, as you can see, this thread stops here. This is just one single text box. 
for the Dramatis Personae. So I'm going to put that in here. Spelling it correctly, although in fact uh, the naming isn't that significant for us. Let's move on to the next and final part, which is the whole thread of the play. So this is the play, drag it into here, uh, this is the play. We're not, we haven't got separate objects for each act at the moment, we're going to do it like that. Now that's step one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just um, explain to you though that we need to do something else to make things stay exactly as they are. You'll see in a moment that when we come to export the EPUB we can actually choose the uh, order of order that this appears is uh, according to the articles. However we do need to set some things up before we get to that. The first thing that's going to appear in our book actually is the frontispiece because we've we've abandoned the um, half title. So having selected this object now, I need to go to object and object export options. And now we have something very specific for EPUB, the EPUB type. And as you can see, I can select uh, something, for example, from here. I'm going to call this front matter. So here's my front matter. Uh, this is going to be a this is going to be a JPEG already so I don't need to change <coughs> anything about that but I'm going to custom layout. I'm going to make sure that this appears in the center by aligning to the center. I'm also going to insert a page break after the image so that there's no danger of the next page appearing on that same page. So there's, there's going to be a page break there. Done. Now we select this object here. We're going to go to Object Export Options. We're going to do something similar. But this time we're going to call this the full title. We're going to now rasterize this. That means we're going to turn it into a graphic so there's no danger of it breaking up. We're going to make it into a PNG file so that it has transparency. And we're going to custom layout it and make sure, again, that it stays in the center like this. We're also going to insert a page break after. Don't forget we've inserted one page break after the frontispiece so we don't need one before. So that's going to be that relative to text flow again. The next point is that the copyright page, we don't want the copyright page to interfere with the table of contents. So once again we're going to go to our object export options and this is already done as a copyright page. I've previously done it. So copyright page EPUB type. Uh, the def this time we're not changing it to a graphic. Uh, we are left aligning it. And this time we're putting a page break after the, after the image, it says, but it's just after the, the, the object. Um, and again, once again, the table of contents, uh, we're going to do that just to be sure. This is going to be our table of contents. So this is a preliminary section and I'm looking for the table of contents, which I think should be here somewhere. Here we are, it's right at the top, top. OK, and I'm going to leave that as it is. But the custom layout, again, is going to make sure that this is uh, left aligned, but we're going to insert a page break after. So that the page break comes after that and be, is sure to then start this uh, on this page. OK, so we're going to make sure this time with this object that this doesn't interfere with um, the the text here but actually we don't need to do that because this uh, our knowledge of Shakespeare is going to start on a new page so I think we should be all right there if we leave that there although once again we might need to come back this act to this and test it um, suffice it to say that we've made a good start on this so I'm now going to try and export it again to the EPUB uh, it's going to be saved in this location under the same name. Make sure we save it as a reflurable. Don't make that mistake. 
uh, we have got everything set up here. The only difference here is that we are going to base this on the articles panel so that it's basic, basing it all on that, um, on that layout rather than the actual way that it looks on the screen. So let's see what happens this time. We're going to get a different version, hopefully. Let's close that one down. You should see in a moment a new version coming in. There we are. Okay, so now we've uh, we've made uh, good progress. We've got no half title. Uh, this image here will enlarge up to full size. It's, it's good quality. Uh, then we've got the table of contents uh, and, and the copyright page. Uh, this is the only thing that isn't quite working at the moment, so we need to go back and, and sort that out because we'll need to make sure that there's a page break after the life of Shakespeare. Uh, and then, as you can see, if we go through to the play, we've got the play uh, on, on the screen as it should be. Just one last thing. Oh, yes, I should say we've also got a Midsummer Night's Dream on the page uh, all by itself. Uh, there are some obviously some tweaks that we might need to make to this. For example, we might want to make this appear in the middle of the page. Uh, but I'm not going to um, do any more in this screencast. This is just really just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that we can and should change. Um, here's our table of contents. Uh, there are cert certainly a number of things that we need to change here, but that would be the subject of the next screencast.